Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Conscious Connections. In today's video, I'm going to share 5 ways for you to be an effective parent. We as parents get bogged down by life and its happenings and we start doubting if we as parents are able to provide optimum love and care to our children or are we falling short in some shape and form. I'm sure this doubt might have lingered on your minds. Hi, I'm Dr. Anjum Sabha. I'm an educator and a conscious parenting and relationship coach. I'm on a mission to help parents evolve and heal their childhood wounds to achieve lasting relationships with their children and loved ones by awakening consciousness. We as parents are the source of love, care, nurturance and well-being to our children. But before becoming a parent where you told that you need to cater yourself with all of the above things that I mentioned before you start showering on your children? Well, maybe not. So how do you expect to fill someone else's cup when your own cup is empty? I'm not here to give you some quick fixes and band-aid solutions for you to be an effective parent. Rather, I'm here to take you on a journey of self-exploration for you to understand that you need to reflect deep within yourself to dig out all those answers that lie in there for you to be an effective parent. So here are my five key takeaways for your effective parenthood. Well, number one is self-care. Once we start embracing parenthood, we forget that we have our own identity and start recognizing ourselves as a parent of so and so child. We beat ourselves so much with all the responsibilities and get into the victimhood and start blaming someone else for our mindset or for our mental well-being. But do you really think it is somebody else's job to take care of your mental health or the way you want to lead your life? Well, I would say it's all in our hands. So when you have a to-do list, where do you put your me time in that to-do list? I think for most of us, me time doesn't even exist on a to-do list. Or even if it does, it's somewhere towards the end of the list and we are so exhausted by the time we reach there, we just want to fall asleep. Isn't it? Do you understand how important is self-care? Well, we as parents have been told by the society and our culture to th if we start thinking about ourselves, it is selfish. It is selfish to devote some time for our own self doing things that we love. Susie Lula, a visionary who is transforming the way people think about self-care says that self-care is not selfish but sacred because it helps in strengthening your relationship bond. So start prioritizing yourself and see to it that you devote few minutes of the day doing activities that you love the most. Start exploring yourself and journaling your thoughts and emotions and channel it out so that your children don't have to become the container of your emotions. Number two, understanding your triggers. It is really important to know how triggers affect our relationships, especially a parent and a child relationship. So we usually tell that we usually believe that it is our children or our partners who trigger us. And we usually say, if you had not behaved this way, I wouldn't have shouted at you. We are very quick to blame someone on the outside when we get triggered. Let me tell you that there is nobody on the outside who can trigger us. We get triggered because of our own emotional baggage that we carry from our childhood. If you as a child were not, you as a child did not feel loved, belonged or worthy of who you were, these unmet needs remain as owns inside us. Now let me give you an example to help you understand better. See if you as a child were ignored or sidelined by your parents and your opinion was not validated or if you had a sibling who was given more importance than you, then you may have low self-worth. So when your child doesn't obey you, you get triggered because of this wound of unworthiness and not because your child did not obey you. So as you see, it is an internal uh, work. We need to look into those internal wounds that we are carrying from our childhood. 
once we learn to work on these wounds and cater our own inner child then we are in a better position to take charge of our emotions so that we do not reflect it on to our children and loved ones number 3 breaking free from your patterns dr shefali my mentor says that we are not living life but living patterns we have been conditioned by our parents our culture our society to have certain beliefs about parenting we have been told that we as parents need to be dominating and controlling our children in order for them to live a disciplined life it is also okay to scream and shout and even whack our children if they are not disciplined well how many of you think that this is a right way to parent your child Do you really really believe in this kind of parenting well i am not for it we have been told that we as parents need to have an upper hand on our children so that they value and respect us as a conscious parenting coach i really want to appeal every parent out there to release our children from the shackles of our control and dominance Let us help our children by liberating them to live an authentic life and help them flourish for who it is they truly are. As a conscious parenting coach, I want to appeal every parent to break free from these patterns of parenting. Let us help our children liberate from the shackles of our control and dominance. Let us help our children to build an identity of their own and flourish in their true authentic self. And number 4 is accepting yourself. Accepting ourselves for who we truly are is a bigger challenge. We always seek validation and approval for who we are from our family members, our friends, our colleagues and even our children. We want to be certified by the outer world if we are a good parent, a good mother or a good wife. Unless someone doesn't appreciate us, we don't feel that we are worthy of a relationship. We start pleasing people just to gain some traction towards us and telling no to someone becomes the hardest part. Let me tell you people pleasing is nothing but a coping mechanism to tackle unworthiness which has stemmed from our childhood experiences. So I want each one of you to step into your power and understand that you are worthy irrespective of somebody else's approval or validation. Know that you accept yourself to the degree you accept your children. Now we come to our last point number 5 knowing you are enough it is very crucial to acknowledge that we are enough just the way we are stop beating yourself with all the guilt and shame that you carry as a parent or as a person it is okay if you were late in serving food to your children or to your family members it is okay if your child was late to bed as you were caught up in the kitchen It is okay if your husband was late to office because he was not finding another pair of socks. Stop blaming yourself for everything that do- goes wrong during the day. Believe that you are amazing just the way you are and you don't really need somebody else to approve you of that. Step into your power, take your own your authority and believe that you are just doing an amazing job for your best of knowledge and capability. Know that you are enough. On this note, I would like to invite parents to embrace parenthood by awakening to consciousness. Once we awaken to consciousness, we embark on a journey of self-exploration and reflection. we start focusing on our internal world rather than on the outer world we create a safe space for our children and for our loved ones knowing that there is nobody on the outside to be blamed thank you for watching this video please do share your thoughts by posting your comments below as to how this video has helped you in changing your parenting perspective and if you have any questions please feel free to post them i would love to answer all your questions you can also follow me on my facebook group and on instagram for which the links have been provided in the description below
Until we meet next, take care. Happy parenting.